Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, September 7th. You're looking at Dorian. You're about to just look at some of the devastation here. Absolute destruction in the Bahamas. We're going to get to that. Here we have the satellite loop showing Dorian at Cat 1 headed towards Nova Scotia. Probably make landfall here just east of Halifax in the next six to eight hours. Moving rapidly. Massive storm. Uh, packed with water vapor. There will be tons of rain and flooding. The winds will be less uh, than any other landfall so far. Probably only in the 50 to 60 mile per hour range. But the Bahamas death toll is rising as it is now over, reported over 43. 70,000 residents left homeless. And they are a very long way away from recovery there. Check out some of the videos and the satellite images of the before and after of the destruction. And you can see that entire towns were laid to waste. This is a big deal. Hurricane Dorian set to make landfall in Nova Scotia today. Most of the region on alert or under hurricane tropical storm and rainfall warnings. There's the entire island. Now, Hurricane Dorian clobbered the Virginias and Carolinas yesterday, stranding residents on the Outer Banks. I'm sure you've heard. The North Carolina National Guard was assisting residents stranded in Ocracoke. More than 400,000 customers lost power as Dorian made landfall in North Carolina. And even a tornado destroyed a mobile home park, of all things. People were stranded in Ocracoke, and the National Guard had to be sent out. There is still loss of power in that region. We still have major outages in North Carolina. The numbers are approaching 60,000. 26,000 without power in South Carolina. So if you're wondering why your lights are off, you're probably not listening to this podcast. And is it really a big deal? I'm sure the mainstream is going to pick up on this and say it's your fault that this hurricane is hitting Canada. But the same path and the same type of hurricane hit in 1940. The Nova Scotia hurricane swept through areas of Atlantic Canada with a similar path to Dorian. It just made a right turn up the coast before the Bahamas. That's the only difference. And there have been other reported hurricanes. The 1873 Atlantic hurricane season included one hurricane that hit Halifax. And that would be Hurricane 2. We got a plane flying over. <laughs> which is very rare. Destroyed 1,200 boats and 900 buildings. And that isn't the biggest hurricane. The 1775 Newfoundland hurricane, which dissipated on September 9th, two days from now, in 1775, is believed to have killed at least 4,000 people, making it the deadliest Atlantic hurricanes of all time. Back in 1775, there was hardly any people here. Must have been your fault back then. Advisory number 56A coming in. At 8 a.m. Saturday, the maximum sustained winds are at 85 miles per hour. And this baby is trucking at 25 miles per hour to the northeast. Heads up, Halifax. Dorian is coming. Let's talk about some interesting facts here. Colorado's record-breaking 2018, 2019 snowpack is still substantial, especially for September. Now, what this means is that glaciers are beginning to build this year. Let me come down here and grab you the quote. On a recent flight out of Denver on Wednesday, September 4th, TetonGravity.com contributor Max Ritter called the amount of snow visible in the mountains substantial, especially for September. And especially because it's going to start snowing again this week in most of the Rocky Mountains. Meaning that any snow that is still on the ground, if it gets covered, will be the beginning of a glacier. Now a ship with climate change warriors is caught in the ice once again. This is year after year after year. These idiots keep trying to access the North Pole to document that we're all burning up. Now, Arctic tour ship MS Mallow with 16 passengers on board got stuck in the ice on September 3rd off Longyearbyen, Svalbard Archipelago, halfway between Norway and the North Pole. The ship 
is on Arctic tour with climate change documentary film teams and tourists concerned with climate change and the melting Arctic ice. All 16 climate change warriors were evacuated by helicopter in challenging conditions. They're all safe and they all feel like idiots. Why? Because this melt season has ended. We're building ice again. We've been in multi-decadal averages all year. There's no deviation from the last two decades. The Northwest Passage was never open this year. And these idiots tried to go from <laughs> Svalbard into the North Pole, which is all ice. Like we said before, at the beginning of maximum melt, the entire Arctic Circle covered in ice, except a few spots. This is the only way to get through the Arctic here at maximum melt, right up here by Russia. Not only that, I went over to Greenland to find a record ice mass gain day yesterday. Three gigatons of ice were built on Greenland yesterday, and I didn't see one article from the alarmists having a party about the fact that Greenland has been saved. In fact, it's amazing. Three gigatons of ice in one single day is tilting the ice sheet. I wish I had the crickets. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Worldwide Volcano News update. Popo puffing regularly to 20,000 plus. The most recent puff to 21,000. We have a new volcano, Tangkongban Prahu, coming into the mix. And it's not over, over at Shivalush. Possible eruption observed, ash to 13,000 feet. So there's still activity at Shivalush. There's a new volcano in the mix. And if you're drinking diet soda, oh God, stop. A new study links artificially sweetened beverages to premature death is prompting public angst, especially amongst the most unhealthy sector of people that drink this crap. Hong Kong police target protesters with rubber bullets and tear gas. Yeah, pro-democracy protesters were stomped down by these plastic shield wearing stormtrooper Nazis. Well, democracy dies in the dark or at the hand of the police state. Are forest fires as bad as they seem? We have already pointed out the nonsense to this lie. And now the BBC has, of all people. Basically concluding that every single one of the suppositions that were burning up whether it be in Russia, whether it be in Canada, the Congo, Brazil, all lies. And here's the data they use. Number of fires in Brazil have been decreasing since 2005, straight down. Area of Brazil, Amazon burned down 300% since 2005. Number of fires in Siberia and Russia dropped by half over the last two decades. Fires in Indonesia have all but ended. And there has been no change in fire counts in the Congo. So, we're not burning up. More importantly, forest fires are an integral part of forest management. It causes some trees to grow. It causes renewal of the biome. And is an integral part to biodiversity on Earth. Making sense of Saturn's impossible rotation is impossible if you use the classical model. Until you adopt the electric universe model of cosmology, you're going to get nowhere. And Saturn will continue to impossibly rotate. India's attempt to land rover at moon south pole fails. Less than two kilometers from the surface, they lost contact, and $15 million just dropped into a hole. I know. It's pretty sad. The mystery of how the ancient Hebrews created the longest of the Dead Sea Scrolls has been solved. In doing analysis of the parchment and the brines used to preserve this document, they found some amazing things. The first thing they found was that no one should ever donate to the Guardian. The second thing they found was that the brines used to preserve these skulls are not from this region. Yes. 
And what that means is these Dead Sea Scrolls are from a, another part of the world, and they were brought here and hidden. Have you heard geologists uncovered the history of a lost continent buried beneath Europe? Yeah, well, it probably doesn't matter because they're claiming this is from hundreds of millions of years ago. And I'm a geologist, and I don't even want to read the article. Isn't that crazy? A new kind of dinosaur has been unearthed, and it's the first of its kind. No, it isn't. It's a hadrosaur. And it's, <laughs> we've been finding these in, anyway. It's actually a new species, which is not a new type of dinosaur. It, it, we know lots about hadrosaurs. This just happens to be a big one. And that's that media again, manipulating those titles. Tyrannosaurus rex had an air conditioner built into its skull. Only there was no electrical parts, there was no compressor, and there was no air conditioner. Maybe a vent, but I digress. Have you seen the new video I put up with Matt Powers? Well, it'll be linked right after this video in a box somewhere where you can click on it. Or you can come check out our videos playlist here and watch Matt Powers on growing soil. Anyone can be an abundant food producer. And if you're looking at more detailed information on building soils and permaculture, Monday afternoon, Matt and I will be here live launching his Kickstarter for his new online course, Building Soils. There's a $5 entry level, which will get you some flashcards on how to build soils, all the way up to a 14-week course where you can be a PhD in permaculture. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. The time is now to start growing food. Prices are rising. Crops are failing. How will you react? Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Be safe. We love you.